everybody welcome to the impressive channel there are a few topics i want to discuss in this video first starting with this news about the wendy williams show because it has been confirmed that wendy's show is officially canceled now this shouldn't be surprising to those who have been keeping up with this story wendy has not made an appearance on her show all season long and also she did not renew her contract so it was inevitable that her show was going to be canceled it was also inevitable that her production company debmar mercury was going to look for her replacement now the actress and comedian Sherry Shepard has been guest hosting for Wendy's show, much to Wendy's dismay. I did hear that Wendy didn't like the fact that Sherry was kind of coming in to take over her spot. But Wendy's production company has seen the reception that Sherry has gotten and they decided to give her her own show. So she's gonna have her own show coming this fall and I believe her show will replace Wendy's time slot. So Wendy unfortunately has been replaced. Now the question is, will Wendy ever return back to the entertainment industry? Will she be able to do another show? Who knows? We know that Wendy has taken a break from it all because she has been dealing with several health complications and she's also been dealing with some personal and financial issues as well. Her former financial advisor had her own bank freeze her out of her account because they felt like she wasn't well enough to access her own money. So there's a lot going on and I don't know if Wendy's health has gotten that bad to the point that she can't handle her own affairs. I don't know, but either way, it just seems like the people around her are trying to exploit her and control her. And if they can't control her, they're trying to dispose her, which is kind of sad. But anyway, back to the whole cancellation announcement. I think it's kind of crazy how her show ended the way it did. She was literally replaced and kicked out the way. And it kind of shows that there's no real loyalty in the industry. The network and the production company doesn't care how long Wendy has been working for them and how much Wendy has given to them. They don't care about her health and her wellness. They only care about the money and they only care about looking for their next cash cow. And they feel like Sherry Shepard can be a good replacement. And I have to be honest here, I don't think Sherry is gonna be able to do what Wendy did. And this is not a knock to Sherry because I do think she's a talented host and I hope her show does well, but it wouldn't be a good idea for her to pattern her show after Wendy's because it's just not going to work. Nobody is gonna be able to do what Wendy did. So as much as people wanna try to find her replacement, because this is how the industry is, they're always ready to look for a replacement when their current star is aging out or moving on to do other things. As much as they wanna replace her, they can never truly replace Wendy. Wendy is a trailblazer in her field and she's irreplaceable. She is, whether you like her or not, you can't deny her impact on entertainment and media. Now moving on, I briefly wanna talk about this viral story that was posted by Hollywood Unlocked that has a lot of people talking. Hollywood Unlocked reported that Queen Elizabeth is dead at the age of 95 years old. Now this has not been confirmed at all. We haven't heard the royal family or any other news outlet report this. So it's definitely one of those reports that you kind of have to say, eh, I don't know. But the reason why I'm talking about it is because I kind of noticed some little reports here and there that kind of made me think that maybe the queen is going to make her transition soon. For one, she actually announced that Prince Charles' wife, Camilla, will be the queen consort. Now the public doesn't even like Camilla like that because she was Charles' mistress while he was still married to Princess Diana. So Camilla is not loved by the public like that, but it does say a lot that the queen is now announcing that she's going to be the queen consort. And I think she announced this because she knows that her time is soon running out. Not only that, it was reported that the queen was dealing with some mild COVID symptoms and she actually canceled a lot of her engagements. So this to me is also another sign that things might not be going that great. And none of this confirms whether or not she passed. So I'm not saying that she did, but I'm noticing some of these stories and I wouldn't be surprised if something were to happen, but 
an announcement is not going to be made right away because there is some protocol that has to take place, especially when someone of this stature passes away. This is everything that will happen when the Queen dies. On the day Queen Liz dies, Charles will become king. But in doing so, it starts Operation London Bridge. Operation London Bridge is the 12-day plan for what will happen when the Queen passes away. First, the Queen's private secretary will call the Prime Minister and tell them London Bridge is down. Once other heads of state are informed, the news will be shared with the UK press. A notice will also be put up outside Buckingham Palace and on the Royal website. Flags across the nation must be lowered to half-mast, all bells must stop and both houses in Parliament are expected to gather. On the evening of his mother's death, Prince Charles will address the nation. Britain will then enter a 12-day mourning period. During this time, the BBC is banned from showing any comedy programmes and all coverage must be around her death. On the fourth day after her passing, the Queen's coffin will be moved to Westminster Hall and visitors will be able to pay respect. On the ninth day after her death, all businesses are expected to close. And finally, on the twelfth day, her body will be moved to Westminster Abbey for her funeral before she goes to her final resting place at Winter. So that was a breakdown of what were to happen if the Queen actually passes. Once again, we don't know if she passed away or not, so I'm not saying she is, but if it comes out that she passed, there's a lot that needs to happen before the announcement is made. Now, last but certainly not least, I want to talk about this whole drama between Megan Thee Stallion and her label 1501 Certified Entertainment. Now, for those who don't know the backstory, let me just kind of break it down a little bit. Back in 2020, Megan went on social media and accused the CEO of 1501, Carl Crawford, of blocking her from releasing music all because he didn't like the fact that she wanted to renegotiate her contract. Now, Megan wanted to renegotiate this contract because she felt like her deal was bad. She felt like her label was trying to take more money than they deserved. Carl, however, denied this and said that Megan was the one not honoring her contract. According to her contract, Megan had to give a percentage of her touring money and her merchandise money to the label. But Carl said that Megan was not paying him. Also, Carl had an issue with Megan signing with Rock Nation behind his back. He says that as soon as Megan signed with Rock Nation, they tried to strong arm him and take her away from his label. And he actually recruited the music mogul Jay Prince to help him out. So the whole situation became very, very messy. Carl did attempt to stop Megan from releasing music, but Megan did end up filing a lawsuit and a restraining order against the label so she could release music. Now, it was reported that Megan did dismiss her initial lawsuit against the label, but the legal battle isn't over yet because right now, Megan issued another lawsuit against the label over her recent album. Now, if you don't know, Megan has been trying to drop albums to get out of her contract. She owes the label three albums. So far, she only has one album that the label acknowledges, which is good news. The other projects she released aren't acknowledged as albums because they're less than 45 minutes. Now she is trying to get her recent music project called Something for the Hotties counted as an album, but the label is giving her trouble. Carl is making it hard because he doesn't want Megan to fulfill her contract. He doesn't want her to leave because she's the one making the label money. So the whole thing is just a big fat mess and Megan and Carl went at each other on social media. Carl posted the news about Megan filing a request to dismiss the first lawsuit she filed against him. And he said in his caption, only the real H town can relate. Now tell him to run my bread dating all the way back from 2018. Megan responded and said this, this dude never know what the F is going on with his business. The case that was dismissed against you was from when you wasn't trying to let me drop music. You and 300 signed off and let me drop music. So there is no case no more. We are most definitely still in court and you still getting sued because you owe me money. I ain't ever been paid from 1501 in my life. I make money because I'm Megan the Stallion. Grown men want to bully me and eat off my name and paint me out as a villain online because they know these bandwagon haters gonna eat that stuff up. 
I don't even be saying nothing to you lame dudes because the truth always comes out. She also said MFs pick with me all day. Then when I say something, I'm the problem. F all y'all. This MF got my accomplishments in that bio and ain't contributed to the stuff since 2018. Not studio time, not a music video, not a word of encouragement, not even a flight. But you trying to eat off me and pick with me online. Whew, that's a lot right there. So as you can see, this is clearly a messy legal battle. Unfortunately for Megan, she's going to have to do what she can to complete her contract because this is the contract she signed. And I'm not saying what she's going through is right, but this is one of the many reasons why it's important for artists to read their contracts before signing them because they can literally sign their rights away. And I don't think Megan made things any better when she signed with Rock Nation without telling her label. That right there is the main source of her contention with Carl. There's an obvious lack of communication and trust there. And I kind of see it from both sides. I understand why Carl is frustrated with Megan, but I also understand why Megan is frustrated with Carl. And Megan is not the only artist who dealt with some issues with her label. There was another artist named Kona Lisa who was signed to 1501 and she herself called out Carl for getting mad at her for asking to see her expense report. She had questions about her contract as well and you see how that turned out. She left her label and Carl basically kicked her aside and started promoting his new artist, Erica Banks. So it kind of seems like Carl has a pattern of doing this to his artists. I don't think the problem solely lies with Megan, but because she signed that contract with him, she has an obligation to fulfill it. Unfortunately, even if the contract is unfair, it's something that she signed, so she has to deal with it. Hopefully she could find a way to get out of it soon, but I don't know if it's gonna be easy for her because Carl is gonna make it difficult for her to leave because he's making money off of her music. It's really a sad situation. But anyway, tell me what you all think about this video down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.